That's my sandwich right there. They are so crispy. So we woke up this morning craving a big Egyptian breakfast of the kind that Salma's mum usually makes for us when we're visiting Egypt. We wanted to put it together, but we had work. So we've put it together now for dinner. There's quite a few different dishes here. Some things you might have seen on the channel before, some things you've probably never heard of. But to start, we've got falafel and with them, we've got these quick pickled aubergines, which are stuffed with a spicy chili mixture. These are the kind of pickles that you usually get from the guys who sell fool and falafel on the streets in Cairo. Let's start by making the pickles which are best eaten after a day of pickling, but they're also pretty good to eat right away. What you'll need is a bunch of baby aubergines like these, which you can find at Indian or Middle Eastern grocery stores. But if you can't find them, then fried slices of regular aubergine work as well. All you need to do for prep is to peel off the green stems, which should come off in one piece and leave your aubergines looking like this. Get a pot of boiling water, then add in some salt. And to keep the color of the aubergines from washing out, you should also add a sliced beetroot. Once the liquid has colored a bit, add your aubergines to the pot and let them boil away for about 15 to 20 minutes. I'd recommend placing a heatproof bowl or plate on top of the aubergines to keep them submerged. And that will prevent these dark brown discolorations from forming. The alternative to boiling is to fry your aubergines, but the boiled ones are a little healthier. While they're cooking, you can make the spicy filling. For 600 grams of aubergines, I use two spicy red chilies, two spicy green chilies, a sweet red pepper, and a bitter green one. Just use whatever varieties of chilies you have on hand, and for extra spice, leave in the seeds and ribs. Now add all of the chili to a food processor or blender, along with eight cloves of garlic. To season, add one teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of paprika, and half a teaspoon each of black pepper, cumin, and coriander. To balance the spice, add a quarter cup of white vinegar and two tablespoons of lemon juice, which will give us a rounded acidic flavor. Finally, before you add the lid, make sure to add in a bunch of fresh coriander, but we totally forgot and it still tasted really nice. Blend this all together until you are left with a chunky chili sauce and this stuff is literal fire. One last thing we have to make is our pickling liquid and this is just some of the liquid we boiled the aubergines in. To it, I added a massive heat tablespoon of the chili, two tablespoons of lemon juice and another quarter cup of white vinegar. Mix that all together and you'll have a spicy pickling solution perfect for the aubergines. Speaking of which, you'll need to take your cooked aubergines and use a sharp knife to cut an opening into the middle of each one. Just try not to tear it from top to bottom. Then it's just a simple matter of stuffing the chili into each aubergine, and I like them full of chili like this. Place the stuffed ones in a container, then pour in the pickling solution to just barely cover your aubergines. Finally, pour over two tablespoons of vegetable oil, which will spread out and give the pickles a nice shine. We ate these pickles right away, but they'll last in the fridge for a couple of weeks and will keep getting better every day. Of course, these are the accompaniment to falafel, so we also made some of our bright green Egyptian falafel. If you haven't seen the video on these, you need to watch it because I share all the details and tips and tricks that get you the crispiest and tastiest falafel in the world. It all starts with some leek, spring onion, parsley, and coriander, which is roughly chopped, then some raw skinless fava beans, which we soaked overnight. Add your greens, some spices, and then the fava beans to a food processor and process them for a good five minutes until you have worked them into a wet and fluffy batter like this. You can use it right away and any leftovers can go into your freezer so you can have falafel whenever the need strikes. I of course fluffed the batter up using the secret technique in the falafel video, then formed it into patties and topped them with coriander and sesame before frying them for about eight to 10 minutes. I took them out when they were golden brown and that is how simple it is to have great fresh falafel on demand. These spicy aubergine pickles and falafel are like two peas in a pod, so definitely make them together. Slap them in some bread and you've got yourself a one-way ticket to Flavor Town. We've also got fool here. Salma, do you want to tell us what you did with this one? Yeah, so the fool was a bit of a freestyle kind of thing. We just added um, some chopped vegetables in there and we added a bit of pickling mixture that went into the aubergine. Gives it a very nice uh, spice and tang. This one is really simple to make and you can throw in anything you want. I covered three different varieties of fool on my fool madame's video, any of which would be great for this breakfast. If you want to make this one, take a can of ready to eat fava beans like this, but try find another brand as these weren't that great. Drain the can, then add all of the contents to a small pot and add a splash of water to help it loosen. Heat this for about two minutes or until the beans are really soft, then add in a quarter of an onion, a quarter of a green pepper and half of a tomato all chopped to a small dice. Now add a heat tablespoon or two of the leftover chili from the pickles or whatever you have on hand for a spicy element. Mix this and taste it. I felt like it needed some salt and acid, so I added in some salt, lemon juice, and some white vinegar. At this point, it tasted pretty good, so I just plated it and topped it with some olive oil, and it's ready for serving. 
And then we've got this funny looking green thing here. Uh, it's called the egger. It's kind of like an, a cross between an omelette and a falafel. They basically just take falafel batter or leftover falafel and you mix it with egg and you fry it up. It is something my grandma used to make for me all the time. And uh, yeah, it's a great way to use up leftover falafel batter, but also a great thing to eat at any time. This egg is even simpler to make. Take about one cup or whatever leftover falafel batter you have and crack in an egg or two. Then whisk it up with a fork till you have a loose mixture like this. Add some clarified butter or oil to a pan and heat over medium heat, then pour in your batter and spread it out so that it's a little thick. I obviously was burning the butter, which is why you should use oil or clarified butter, but just cover it with a lid and allow it to cook until the top has firmed up a little. Flip this over when it's firm, but just ignore that I totally burnt my one and let it fry on the side for about a minute or two. When you're happy, place it with the burnt side hidden from view and this is like a big falafel but with a slightly omelette texture if that makes any sense. We've also got another egg dish, which is scrambled eggs with basturma. Basturma is a dry cured beef with um, lots of spices on it and stuff. It is my favorite breakfast food in the world. To make it, get some basturma or pasturma from your local Middle Eastern store, and it kind of tastes like Italian brazaula, but with paprika, cumin, and coriander mixed in. Stack a few slices, and if you want, you can remove the extra spice coating for a milder flavor, then just chop this up into large squares. Now melt some clarified butter or oil in a pan, then add in your basturma and fry for about 30 seconds until it's really fragrant. I whisked four eggs with 50 milliliters of milk and added that to the pan. Now this is just scrambled eggs, but I guarantee you it'll taste a million times better if you don't make tiny curds, and instead you just make some big ones like this. Packed into some thin pitta, I could eat this every single day of the week and I won't get bored in the slightest. And then we've got a uh, cheese here. What's in this cheese, Salma? So this is just a white cheese. You pick any white cheese that you like, depending on the saltiness that you prefer. And you add quite a lot of olive oil and some tomatoes. You can add whatever herbs you want. We added some dried mint and nigella seeds. It's really good and it's also really good with black tea. So in Egypt, most people would make this with what we call gibna bida or white cheese, which is sold in barrels or tins like this, and it's like a softer version of feta cheese. We're using a nice and salty Greek feta instead, and you'll need 100 grams, which you want to roughly break up into small pieces. To it, you'll add 30 grams of cream cheese, and then mash the two together to combine. Once it's paste-like, add in 25 milliliters of olive oil, and then blend this together until you end up with a fluffy and almost smooth cheese like this. Now add half a teaspoon of dried mint and about three quarters of a finely chopped tomato, then add half a teaspoon of nigella seeds and mix it until well combined. Top this with some olive oil, extra nigella seeds and tomato, and you'll be surprised by how much flavor this packs in. Those are the savory dishes. And then we've also got two sweet dishes and we've got honey with clotted cream. Now this is something that is extremely decadent. You just spread it on some bread and eat it. Fantastic. And then we've also got molasses with tahini and we've shown that before, but yeah, it was worth showing again because these are the two classic things that you get for dessert after breakfast in the Middle East. And then with that, we've got some breads. We've got classic flatbread, uh, which works really well with this. And then we've got a special flaky Egyptian bread which we haven't made on the channel yet and we want to make it, but it is really complex and needs a lot of space to make. So it might be something we have to find a better way of doing in our kitchen. That sums up our Egyptian breakfast. Now you may not be Egyptian or have ever visited the country, but you can easily bring a slice of Egyptian culture into your home with this Egyptian breakfast. There's something on the table for every kind of eater, and I feel you'll start doing this a lot once you've tried it. Comment below which Middle Eastern country you want me to do next for breakfast, and click here to see more breakfast dishes from the Middle East.